Hello Philippines. Well, you know, I'm out here today at our property at Las Conchas Del Mar, Tigbawan, Iloilo, and Nomacan. Brongai Nomacan. Well, I'm having to build some jetties going out into the water. I don't know if people buying with climate change or not. I know the earth goes through cycles. That's what's made the planet what it is. Changes, changes, changes. But the fact is right now it's changing. The beach is changing. Our beach here used to be so wide. Then when Typhoon Yolanda come around, it took it away greatly. Now, when Typhoon Yolanda came, it didn't direct hit here. I mean, not even an outer band was here. It was far away, but it turned the water up so bad that even to the back side of this island, away from the direction it came, it removed several hundred feet of shoreline. You see them waves far out there, them white caps? That used to, and prior to Yolanda, what was that? In 2013, I guess, maybe November of 2013? I think that's when it was. Where you see those white caps way out there, that was still dry sand beach out there. And then it went on out from there. And now every storm that's coming, it just keeps coming in more and more and more. It's all the way to the point of exposing even a clay shell now underneath down here. It's just washing away. Well, sometimes you gotta be proactive. Now in the US and other Western nations and even parts of the Philippines here, they'll build, I believe what they call a jetty. That's what I know it to be. You can correct me. And it cuts that rip current that happens along the shore when the waves are hitting at this angle. You have a rip current. It's always shifting and moving the shoreline. So what's a big beach here today, maybe no beach tomorrow, and the next storm come through, and there's sand here again, but it's always shifting. But it's also taken away. As you see, look at these coconuts that were standing trees here before. Now they're not. Just our last trip six months ago, we've lost probably an additional 40 feet of beach in the past six months. There's a column out there in the water where there used to be a fence. You see it bobbing right out there. It keeps appearing and disappearing in the water. So, they have a highway building project up here and they're jackhammering out all the old road and people that built illegal structures out onto the, the government property. So I started buying really cheap, these truckloads of cement. Now some of these pieces are massive. You would need a very large piece of equipment to move them. The guys here are doing the best they can not costing me much for this and repurpose it and when the tides low we're carrying it on out further is it effective absolutely it's effective there's one on down the beach down here where it's at it has built the beach way up right here in the two days we've been putting in here there is probably 18 20 inches more sand already banked up on this one side and growing outward now in a curve to where they was way down low like this now it's up stepping up when the comes from the other direction it'll start stacking it to the other side the thing is is that you really need these things repetitively along a coastline it's getting tore up and eroded like this. Not all places in the Philippines do. Some places don't get these direct hits. Some places are big, stony outcrops. 
uh, large stone pebble beach they're not washing away like this but this is a real fine powdery sand so of course the locals here I have to combat the locals sometimes they don't understand and then once you do something and they see the result they understand but it's hard for me to do all these projects alone um, a lot of these little Baron guys here they don't have the funding to do some of these projects or they just don't realize that they could have done it they could have also captured this concrete coming from the road and went out here along the beach along their Baron guy and repurposed this into making these jetty little outshoots here and cut that rip current that comes along different times of the year sorry for the wind out here that's what's got these waves going so I had complaints there's um, some people that are settling on some property that don't belong to them over here next door that of course they're trying to live and they're trying to have their home and be safe so they at first it was something different they don't understand it they see it as a threat the Baranga officials come they looked at it they took pictures they saw that I had a right to protect my property here protect my beach line I also was on a move to stop the locals from coming here to our beach in front of our property and in front of the whole subdivision here uh, which is the beachfront subdivision stripping away our sand carrying it away sacks full at a time to these other places and carrying it across the road people running a little business carrying it to other houses being built and other projects being built using the sand and stone from here to mix cement well it turns out there's a municipal rule to not do that so i just needed to stop you take a man that carries 8, 10, 15 sacks of stone a day from right in front of us. And then another man and with four or five sacks and another one, three or four. And this one with pails full every morning. Man, it equals up to dump truck loads in no time. It's like ants. Look, they're small and they're carrying tiny loads, but they can move mass amounts, especially when it's in numbers. So I have to protect ours as well. And I don't mind helping them at the same time if they will approach it properly. Not come to me in an aggressive manner or an attacking manner. But, you know, come to me if you don't understand or you have a concern and speak to me with a level, calm tone. Ask what I'm doing. Ask how it will affect them. Ask what can they do to protect themselves. Because I tell you, I'm a man, I've always had a giving heart. And uh, these loads of cement hadn't cost me that much. You see them? They're carrying them out right there, bamboo, rope. It's like we're building the pyramids. Hey, y'all need to y'all need to pick that back up. Wait, wait, wait. You need to get it over here. Right. Keep it over here so I don't have a neighbor complain yeah, that okay. I put it on his property. Put yeah. it here. Yeah, just pick it right back up. Back, put it back, over back. here. What yeah. Happened? I mean, if the next man's concerned that I'm going to get a little on his property and affect him a little bit with what I'm doing, well, I'll just make sure to stay off of it. Although this particular man I don't think will complain the doctor bought this lot next to us he's got pretty much I think positive intentions here as well and he don't want others encroaching on him but I'm sure that he's a smart man him and his wife are both doctors that he'll see the benefit even to him on his side right there because it that will actually stack sand and grow his beach area out as well sorry there i had to stop them i seen them putting it over too far off from where we need it 
So anyway, back where I was at. These truck loads of this, the brine guy should have uh, been on the stick and and took claim to this as they were hauling it away from this national road project out here anyway. But I bought dump truck load after dump truck load of this and some of it's very huge. And I'm building a jetty wall out. Now, the question is, is will it withstand? I've seen some of them built down through here that washed away. Well, there's a couple theories on this. You set something big and you tie it all together in a long string, solid cement, and you say like some of them, they put these concrete tubes and then they filled the tubes up, but they were just sitting on top of the current beach at the time. Well, anything you build on top of sand can get undermined. You know, I think even Christ spoke about these things as parables in the Bible. So, if that is one constant, long, solid, poured jetty and beach wall there, if it doesn't have a deep footing going in, and this water undermines that sand, it's just like I was talking about them carrying the sand away in bags day after day. Well, it's the same with the water. That water's working 24 seven nonstop. So a few grains at a time disappearing, washing away, it's gonna shift that and it's gonna crack and it's gonna break. The next thing is if it's solid, the water, the waves are gonna hit it and they're gonna push. Now, my theory is, is some even that I've looked at in the US, um, even by some state projects, that they put these large pieces they don't bond it together and that way the water can hit it and actually lose momentum and disperse in between it and the, the sand will also go in there and deposit in between it plus if it is undermining it'll just settle all down it'll just keep settling down working its way down into the sand At that point we'll just add more on top and build it up eventually it'll create its own base underneath there and um, probably stop settling. And it's better if we put larger pieces out on the top. So I don't want it bonded together. I want it to be where it can move, where it can shift, where this low spot out here that dropped down can go down and, and it not tied together. So that's, that's the theory on it. <clears throat> of course, you can do it other ways, but those ways are high dollar. And I'm not here to uh, invest that kind of money. This is a low cost project. Uh, I hate to even say on this video how cheap these truckloads of uh, repurposed cement broke up out of the highway and from illegal structures, how cheap it was. Um, you know, some people are backfilling their property with this and then selling those lots. Um, for houses to be built and then the code here is is that you got to dig down and put in these big uh, Footings on the, on the bottom of your piers going in <laughs> I feel sorry for the people that buy these lots that are backfilled with this massive concrete Some of these blocks are huge. You need a huge excavator rubber tire loaders and a dozer to deal with I'm trying to avoid them bringing me that big of pieces well <laughs> These guys are gonna dig down and get a surprise man. Oh, man What a surprise they will find and they'll probably just work around it Not put in the proper footing say well, there's cement there and go on. I Just wouldn't want one of those lots myself But here we are. This is our project um, I'm building two jetties out here down at my brother-in-law's um, I may look at putting a third and that'll protect a lot of the shoreline where some of the locals live here too um, it's not gonna stop it I mean it's 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 a band-aid that's all it is it's a band-aid it's not a fix you can't beat mother nature 
you can't change the course of nature you just can't we think we can but we can't this earth goes through cycles and changes but i just can't sit and do nothing either and watch all this wash away so this was the opportunity that was affordable and uh repurposing something out there and i'm always about recycling and repurposing i think that the barangay officials from what i understand saw what i was doing and i was told that they're looking at taking on a project of doing exactly the same thing and making it a barangay project to protect more of this beach line down through here see that's that's sometimes all it takes you know you strike a match you set a fire um and that's all i want to do you know protect mine help other people a little guidance if it works out great and if it didn't there wasn't no mass budget lost on it not at all so anyway that's what's happening today it's trying to protect this beach things change and i tell you what else another project that i would like to tackle here is on the pollution aspect plastic now look right here trash trash watch this right out here look here go right here trash go down here it's a little candy things popsicle trash 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 if you see most of this is plastic trash plastic bags trash plastic bags plastic bags plastic bags plastic plastic bags it is a daily bottle here you don't know how much we pick up <clears throat> now the problem is is that some of this washes in here from far away from far far away not from the locals but it also comes directly from the locals as well this this municipality this barangay does not have uh, an efficient or effective or a fully um, functioning trash disposal system from what I understand I've asked a couple officials here and uh, there's a lot of problem with people just digging a hole in the sand out near the shore you know they think they can just sweep it under the rug as we say in the US you know you don't see it there's no foul then as waves hit remove that sand expose that trash you buried there wash it out into the water and here is permanent pollution into the world including baby stoppers as well now you would be surprised how many beautiful beaches in the world that there's trash buried underneath it's not a problem just here where I'm living it's not a problem just in the Philippines this is a an international problem human beings in our trash especially especially plastics uh, it's, it's something else so I wish there would be some type of program that could be implemented number one to uh, teach these children here in the local schools change that mindset of throwing the trash down uh, just dropping it to the ground we had a guest with us recently that we went on a little trip and we had a little trash in the truck I'm, I'm not beating this person up it's a mindset that's already been put in to that person in the past but it's it's this is a mindset that i'm speaking of changing we stop pull over get a drink uh just stretch your legs for a minute and the way they're going to clean the trash out of the truck was just to throw it out into the ditch on the side of the road well uh me my wife nor my friend cap that was with us believe in doing that <coughs> we're really against that so um, he politely asked her please don't do that she don't understand because it has been a way of life here 
they buy something it just falls out of their hand nobody's in shock or saying hey don't throw that trash because it's all they know <clears throat> but there is municipalities in this country that have implemented powerful fines against it of course in Baraka where it's a tourist zone uh, Dumaguete or smoking outdoors in the city and dropping trash you will be in trouble instantly even if you're a child and uh, in other places as well they give you a, a couple of examples but rules are being implemented by some cities now and it's starting to clean up but if those cities are willing to do it why can't this city be willing to do it why can't this barangay be willing to do it why can we not address this issue and instead of it being a, a slow road or slow uh, what they say that uh, a slow boat to China to make this happen why can't this attitude ramp up and a faster progression across the country and address this issue especially with the population growing so another problem that I dealt with here too is them coming over and digging and burying their trash and burning their trash in holes right here on our beach and I've pretty much got that under control at this point um, it's been a battle the whole way though it's been a battle the whole way but but it's changing and um, you know it, it seems that the community would be proud to have a cleaner uh, more protected place to live that someone comes in with an attitude to care and help make change and see drainage repaired to see the shore protected see trash cleaned up you would think but it's these generations that just grew up doing what their parents did and their parents did and their parents did if we can teach their children to change their mind we can shift this we can change this to where then those children in a few years will grow up and now have their children and now have a new mindset and now be telling that child don't throw that trash pick that trash up pick that bottle up um, man that would be a very very wonderful thing it starts with learning it starts with learning and I would just wish that they could maybe implement into the schools a little bit about that and let the children come home and maybe educate the parents a little bit you know um, but also look we have a social system that's what we have governments for around the world we have governments to help form structures rules laws to protect things and to protect ourselves and it's also their job to do this as well it is actually really their job to do this and uh, I hope that they quit sitting idle and get on with the rest of the program that's happening here in this country of the cleanup the change the upgrading in this nation to a first-class nation um, you know be part of the solution not part of the problem well that's that's what I had to say about it right now I'm creating my own solutions I'm gonna protect what's what's mine and my wife's and my family and, and I'm we're, I'm gonna set an example of what it can be like I want it to where when they walk by my place in the same like when they walk by Sully Mar Mr. Psycho down there um, and bear land down here and they see these clean places by people who care like Sully Mar he's Filipino and he's a really great man in this community there are long time people here farmers business owners and he has a wonderful mindset with this too good man good man so I want them to walk by and see that and not just say well they're rich picking up a piece of trash or not throwing trash is not a rich or poor problem it's a mindset problem and uh, it's just a matter of sometimes education and demonstration so um, I'm not trying to offend anybody out there or nothing like that I, I care about people rich or poor money does not make you my friend I'll tell you that right there 
the fact I know a lot of just pure rich assholes and I'll just say it like it is and uh, I'm not trying to be a rich or poor asshole I'm trying to help out not just for myself but for the community there's a lot of great people right here where I'm at good people and sometimes even the good people misunderstand what's going on and sometimes it's hard to explain of course I have a little bit of a language barrier they speak a lot of English but what did you say sometimes lost in translation but out there for yourselves too and anybody watching this and even my my local friends here and this community if y'all watch this video just think about what I'm saying and y'all all play a part and try to help out here and if if there's something here that you want to address with me or talk with me you know come sit down let's have a cool glass of water or some juice or maybe a beer and let's talk about it and work it out on a friendship level and uh, and you'll see I'm I'm not against anybody here and I'm not trying to bring no harm um, there's a lot of people already seen that and I appreciate all the great people that supported me here and just want to thank you again for that so I'm gonna wrap this up um, I know this isn't a video for everybody out there but it, it's something I felt in my heart that I wanted to share I'm, I'm not out for the views or the likes or anything I'm just trying to spread a little education so I'm gonna get back here with the Egyptian pyramid building one stone at a time and you all take care out there just remember always eat good food love your family and play and enjoy life take care Thank you.